If you're new to my YouTube channel, please click that subscribe button and remember to click the bell icon to get notifications of all my uploads throughout the week. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So after last Friday's fast forward video where I showed you creating this front cover to my 6x9 lap book, I got lots and lots of comments, people saying, um, where's the tutorial on how to make it and have they missed it? Well, no, mainly because I haven't done one just yet. Um, <clears throat> so the thing with this 6x9 journal, or not journal really, the lap book, is it's unusual size. Now, if I was doing this again, I wouldn't do it this size. I would actually make it slightly smaller. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to create the basic structure for the lap book, but I'm going to show you how to make it just slightly smaller and I'll explain the reasons why. So let me swap over to my overhead camera and then we'll get started. Okay, so this is my six inches by nine inches lap book. So, and it's just basically constructed with a piece of seam binding just acting like a uh, like a traveler's notebook on that side with pages pushed under on this side we have a pull out page that flips over completely and can be folded that way tucked in or folded that way and tucked in either way so the basic structure is quite easy to do now, the reason I said I was going to do it slightly different is this. Six inches by nine inches is kind of a strange size. Now, let me try and illustrate what I mean. This cream piece of cardstock here is eight and a half by 11 inches. Now, this is US letter size. This white sheet of paper is 297 millimetres by 210 millimetres, which is European A4 size. So this is what we put in our photocopiers and printers here in the UK and in Europe, and I think in Australia too. And this funny size is what the US use. Now, if you were going to create a lap book which was six inches by nine inches, it's bigger than the width of the eight and a half by 11. It's also bigger than the width of the A4 size. You'd only be able to get one cover from the center of a piece of paper if you were printing a pattern. And the same goes for the eight and a half by 11, which isn't a great use of paper. However, if you just reduce the size down to five inches by eight, you get a lot more for your money. And I'll try and explain. Five inches by eight inches will now fit twice inside a US eight and a half by 11. So you'd get two out of one sheet. But also, if you look at the European a4, you'd also get two out of an A4 sheet. So it's a lot more cost effective if you're printing digital images to create the background like this for your lap book. It's more cost effective to do it five by eight. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to put the basic structure for a five by eight lap book together today. So this one will get put to one side. And in future, if I decide to make another page to go inside the lap book, I'm going to use the five by eight version. If I do do another page for this one, I'll probably show you how to do that or what I've done, maybe just as an aside video, but if we're going to create some more pages and inclusions and that kind of stuff to go in the one that you can build, 
the one that's more cost effective, I will do it in my 5 by 8 version. So, what do we need to start off with? Well, you need some cardstock. So just your bog standard, letter sized or A5, or oh, sorry, A4 sized cardstock. And I've just got some grey cardstock here. And I've already trimmed out some pieces at five inches by eight inches. So I've got three. Now this is gonna form the basis or the base for the lap book. Now, as part of the offcut, I've also got two strips at eight inches by three quarters of an inch. And they're going to form part of our gusset on the left and the right. That's this piece here. Now, this checkerboard pattern that you can see on mine is duct tape, or duct tape, depending on which way you want to pronounce it. Um, I got this pattern stuff from my local hardware store. It does come in different patterns these days. I've also got one that's got a damask pattern on it. And it wasn't that expensive. But for the purposes of today, and showing you how to put these things together, I'm just going to use masking tape. Now this is wide masking tape. It doesn't have to be, but I just find it easier. Now, masking tape is made of paper, which also means then that you can alter the colour of this if you want to. And with it being a creamy colour, it's easier to add over a darker colour to kind of disguise the sides of your lap book. So if we look at the basic structure here, and let me just take out that inclusion from in there. We basically have three pages. So this one, which is the inside back, we've got the main back, and then we've got the front cover. So that's basically, if you ignore this piece here, so you've just got three pieces with that gusset in between. So the easiest way to do is to take your first piece, get your masking tape, or whatever tape you want to use and then run a piece top and bottom if you don't get it quite straight on it doesn't really matter because you can just peel it off I cleaned my glass cutting mat the other day and it's now completely pristine. And then I'm going to add that gusset piece, just trying not to get my head in shot, and I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch, or about four millimetres of a gap. And then I'm just going to fold that over. All of these will get hidden, so don't worry about it. And then just take your tape again. And then just add another piece. Turn it over. And this time, do the same thing with the same sort of gap in between. And then fold it over. And then if you want to, you can take another piece of masking tape and then cover the whole thing like so. And again, just fold it over. Now, you will find that it's very easy to now fold and you've basically created a piece with a spine. So we're now going to do exactly the same thing again, but this time on this side. I probably didn't pull a big piece, not enough. That's it. So 
again. Masking tape down. Just try and get it as equal as you can, but it doesn't matter if you don't. Flip it over, grab your other piece of card. And again, about an eighth of an inch gap. Lay it down. And then because we've got a little bit extra there, actually we could cheat. And maybe just drop that next piece straight down over it like so. And then just flip it over. Flip it over and then we can put piece that, that just runs all the way down on this side. Now you don't have to be too exacting with this because you will be covering it over. And just do the same thing again. Just pop your creases. And then you've created a three-fold book. That's the basic structure for that. So, next <clears throat> you can decorate these. So, I've got a little collection here. I'll just try and talk you through these. Okay, so I've got a collection of papers. I've got four floral papers, vintage floral papers. These are, in size, exactly five by eight. They fit exactly those pages that we've just created. I've also got two maps. I have two sets of vintage adverts, two different book pages, two different music sheets. We have a vintage ephemera sheet which is directions for person, persons learning to write. And then we have a sheet of composition paper, vintage, all nice and aged. And then we have a piece which is kind of old parchment paper with a splodge on it. It doesn't really make any difference which way around that goes. And we have another piece that looks like brown packaging paper. Now this, all 16 of these, I have put together as a digi download, which is available on my website now. So they're a high resolution PDF and it doesn't matter whether your printer takes 8.5 by 11 or A4. If you print them, they will fit. And the border that's left, if you don't do any um, fit to page or um, page scaling on it, they will print the right size. So you get all of those in that digi download. So like I said, there's 16, eight and a half, sorry, five by eight inch sheets that you can use, like I'm going to do, to decorate this lap book, if you want to have a go at doing it with me. So I'm going to grab some glue and then I will be right back. Okay, so all I've got is just some white or clear spirit glue. Now you can use the um, Tombow Mono Aqua, you could also use that Elmer's Clear if you can, or if that's the one that you can get, or the Coal Spirit Glue, but you can also use PVA if you want to. So before we stick these sheets down, I've decided I'm going to put these two floral ones. This is going to be the front of my book, and this one's going to be the back page, which will be that bit. So this is going to be this page. And that's going to be the front, so that's going to be the front. And then the middle page will be this one. 
Sorry, no it won't. It'll be that one. Hey, we'll get there in the end. Now, before we go any further, before I stick these down, I don't like the fact that I've got uh, that masking tape just showing as cream there. So all I'm going to do is just grab a foam blender and I've got Tree Branch Archival Ink. Now you can do this any colour you want. You can also paint it if you're that way inclined, but I wouldn't do it with anything that was kind of water reactive. Now the archival ink is permanent when dry. So I'm just going to rub some of that tree branch ink down the inside of that masking tape. I'm just going to create a little bit of a grungy, distressed kind of look. Now, if it's not dark enough, you can switch over to a darker colour if you want to. You can even use black if you want to, or you can introduce a different colour. When I glue this down over the top, the edges of that masking tape are going to disappear altogether. But you can still distress the edges later on, which we will do. So I'm going to start off just by adding the glue. Now I'm using this glue because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room and it means I can get it lined up pretty much bang on where I want it before it grabs. And it doesn't matter 100% if you're just slightly off with your cutting out, it can be quite forgiving because you can then add a distress ink or paint or whatever you want to around the edge just to finish it off. Like I said, I am going to show you just the basic structure of this lap book. And then we'll have a little chat about how else you can go away then and decorate it. Okay, so I'm now going to grab my stash of papers and I think I'm going to put this kind of stripy packaging paper as my back piece. The beauty of this is as well, if you decide later on that you don't like it, you want to have a different one altogether, just glue it over the top or add some ephemera over the top of it. There we go. few seconds just to grab and then we can flip it over and we can decorate the inside. So I think for the inside I want to use the map. And that's the wrong way around isn't it? That's the inside, inside front cover and that can go on the back. Now I had to scale this map down when I created this so unfortunately there is a little bit missing just off New Zealand. Sorry. But you can use any map you want to. Now of course because we've altered the size on this one from that 6x9 to 5x8 this also now means that you can get your papers and you can take your papers to decorate your lap book from any 8x8 paper pad that you've either got already in your stash and you've been sitting on because you've got that special one that you've never wanted to touch because you like the papers too much 
or you've got spare pieces lying around and you've had no idea what you wanted to do with it. So now because we've got this special size, this just slightly smaller size, it means you can use up all those spare pieces of paper, a spare 8 by 8 spare 12 by 12s and spare A4s or letter sizes. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can all create one that's exactly the same size. And I did play around with different sizes and versions of this before I decided to show you how to create it, just so I knew what size to tell you was the optimum. And again, I've printed these sheets off using my inkjet printer, my Epson WF2630, which is the permanent ink version. Okay. So in the middle, I think we're going to use, shall we use an advert piece? Like so. Now of course, in the middle, we could have also added some of that archiver link. Now because we've stuck it down, we're actually distressing the edges of that map as well. So we're grunging up the edge of that map, which isn't a bad thing. It's only because I forgot to do this before sticking it down, duh. But that's okay. Adding vintage can be done at any time and you can add more and more as it goes on. The beauty of these lap books is you can just build up and add pages to it whenever you want to. You're not fixed, you're not sewing anything. It's just making sure that it still folds okay. Now you see what I mean about adding the colour? It just takes away from that starkness from the masking tape, but because the masking tape is theoretically made of paper, it will take the colour. But you could always add your own washi tape, you could always do what you want down there, you could even stamp down there if you want to. So we've now got inside, outside, we've got that paper on the back and we've got that paper in the middle. Okay, so next I'm going to grab two more sheets of the card which we cut earlier, five by eight. So this will fit within. Now what I advise doing now is just taking off a very small amount. Now, So this is my paper trimmer and I'm just going to take it to the end of that blade. So I'm only taking off, let me see if I can, about an eighth of an inch. And in metric you're only looking about three or four millimetres. I'm going to do it again, about an eighth of an inch, it doesn't have to be exact, just take a sliver off. Okay, so let's just put that to one side for now and let that glue dry and then bring these two pages back in. So we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did last time, grab your masking tape. And then just run it all the way down. Turn it over and then add your second page. But again, leave that little bit of a gap. Fold your masking tape over. 
and then just run another piece down the centre. And then you can flip it over. Because we're creating a kind of vintage black book, you can make it crinkly, you can make it wrinkly, whatever you like. Okay, so next then, I think I'm going to use the sheet of composition paper and I'm also going to use that sheet that says directions for persons learning to write. And then again, grab that ink. I'm just going to rub it down the centre. And then I'm going to grab the composition book. down just up to the edge. Now because we took a thin sliver off the paper that's now going to show over the edge. Don't worry about that because we can trim that off when the glue's dry. And then we'll do the same thing but this time I'm going to line up the right hand edge To about there, so we're not, we're only, you're only seeing a little bit of that masking tape. As long as it folds both ways, you know we're spot on. And then we can turn it over and then we can just trim off the excess. So if that glue hasn't quite dried, don't worry. trimmer out the way and then on this side I'm going to I think I'm going to stick down a piece of music paper so that's upside down but again we can grunge up before we do that Again, take it up to the edge, line it up, and then should we put both pieces of music paper in? 
Why not? Folds. And then just bring the trimmer back in, or you can just use a craft knife. Keep it straight down. Okay, so we now have our first inclusion. So, we now have a page that's going to sit over here. So you've got the choice, either you can take that in, just use in another piece masking tape and then fold it and then you can tape it in again That's because the ink is still a little bit wet or Move that to one side and I'll show you what I did with this one. Or I've got some seam binding and I'll just grab the box. Find it again. There we go. Or you can use string, twine, whatever you want to use. So let's just grab a piece of that brown. Now I've got different colours and all I'm going to do is wrap it round, cut a piece off so I've got plenty to play with for tying a knot in. So you don't have to go too tight. Probably didn't leave enough. This is where I get really frustrated because I'm not brilliant at tying knots under pressure when I'm filming. There we go. Okay, so move that up and around the back. And then you can take your inclusion sheet, slide it under. Push it just to the edges. And then you can add pages at either side. But because you've got a deep gusset on both sides, that would just mean knocking over the archival link. Stand up, you're drunk. You can actually add quite a few. Now, if you don't want it that way around, just slide it out. Decide which way around then you want it. And then 
you can then start building up and building up your pages. Now, of course, we've still got all this lot left. So what you can do is, let's say, take this sheet and we'll decide that we want to add a pocket. So I'm going to cut that's eight inches in total. So if we cut it in half, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to score it at about half an inch like so. Just run a little bit of glue hopefully that will stick very quickly come on why aren't you sticking glue? There we go, now it's stuck. And then, I'm gonna grab a punch, and just about line it up in the middle. Just punch out that circle and then you can either use glue or double sided tape depending on which way you want to do it and then you can drop a pocket into the middle And then you've got somewhere to put a tag or a photograph or a note and you can add pockets on any pages that you want. So just bring back my large one. I've got a pocket here but I've also got oops, two pockets here. So I've put one piece and then I've put another piece over the top. So. I've created a two-tiered pocket system and that's all by doing the same thing. Just literally laying down then laying down to build up your pockets. So we've got a pocket there. You could add a pocket onto the back of this one. So you have a smaller piece that's remaining. So all we need to do is just, because for that inclusion piece we just trimmed a little bit off if you remember rightly. So let's just take another little piece off there, like so, flip it over, score it half an inch, fold it. Okay, so instead of gluing this time, See if I've got a roll of double sided tape which is already open. Just push that up, give myself some work room. So that's some double sided tape. I'll just trim that off. And then this should be a finger lift. Yes, excellent. Fold it over, bring that punch back in. About equal, about halfway. And then, oop, a little bit too much glue there. Get rid of that. And then we can stick that pocket 
down on the inside. And then you can leave it to dry. But just as a test, So we'll pull that back out of the inside and then we can fold that and just put that to one side until it dries. That one's drying quite nicely. Now you can add as many of these inclusions in there as you want to. If you wanted to add that flip piece all you have to do is before you stick one of your insides down you can glue that down so that it folds on the inside as well. And you can have the same thing at this side and build up as many pages as you actually want to. And then you can spend a little bit of time just going around the edges, distressing. Let's just grab another colour, distre not distressing. I'm using permanent archival ink because I prefer the fact that these inks are permanent when dry. I'd rather not use distress ink that could reactivate with water. So just add in some grunge all the way around the outside. If your papers weren't exactly perfectly matched up and lined up this is where it gets to be hidden and then all the way up your hinge side, turn it over and then you can distress the edge there. Run it all the way down. And you can make it as grungy and old as you want. So that's the inside grunged up. And now we can do the same thing for the other side. So you don't even have to do this before you stick it all down, which is the beauty. You could literally just sit, create a page by gluing it all together and then sit in front of the TV with a tray on your knee and just go around and distress all the edges. See, I like these lined pages because it means that you can add journaling or practice handwriting or calligraphy or anything like that. You can stamp, you can splatter, you can spritz, you can add bits of ephemera. These are just the basic structure of the pages. What you can do with it afterwards is where the magic happens. So let's slide that back under. Sure we've got the ribbon over. There we go. So you can see you start to build up all that vintage look on the back. You've got your pocket for your tag. Back page. So let's just see. We now have W Grace. We can now sit in there. It's kind of Monty Python-esque. And you've got all that space to build and build and build up all your pages and add your ephemera, 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 it's a bit of a Freudian slip there, whenever you want to. Basic structure of that lap book. And like I said, you can just spend some time going around, adding in 
a bit of grunge to taste. Distress to taste. There you go. And I've still got all of these pages to use up on more inclusion pages. And of course, if you've got the Digi Download or you buy the Digi Download, you can print the whole thing again, or just print one of the sheets off and add more pattern papers. Or you can use up your 12x12s, your 8x8s, your 8.5x11s or your A4s. Because now that we've done that at 5 inches by 8 inches, all of that, all of these, will fit. How cool is that? So I hope you've kind of enjoyed watching how to put the basic structure of that lap book together. Now before I go any further, um, I just have one little disclaimer to mention. This lap book idea, I'm just putting the punch away, this lap book idea is not mine. I have seen uh, a couple of people creating these lap book kind of projects on YouTube which is where I got the inspiration to create my version from. Now the two people that I watched, I will put their names and a link in the description below this video. Um, the Bo Bohemian Crafting was one and another lady whose YouTube channel is called Elemental Designs. Uh, I watched both of those and got some great tips on using file folders and vintage papers and that kind of stuff. But they also, I think, um, stitch and add signatures inside their um, black books too. But the other person I think is quite worth watching or having a visit to is a lady called Nick the Booksmith. Um, if you want to lose yourself in somebody's creative imagination, then Nick is definitely one of those ladies that you can do that with. So again, I'll put the description for all three of those YouTube channels, uh, a link to all three in the description below this video. But that's just my take on the lap book. And if you want to create yours 5x8, and you want that digi download, these are available now as one on my website. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me and Brett. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels without whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you.